The, the following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, folks, Basil Chapman. As we're about to wrap up the month of May in the candle of the uh, Dow right here. So far, it's a long-legged doji candle. The Dow's down 390 at 32,821. We've had a 30,635 <clears throat> low on the 20th of May. And in just days, we screened up to the 33,000s. Um, so far, that really helps the monthly candle of the Dow. Look at the S&P, the S&P. So the Dow right now is down 386. The S&P is down 50. And 4109, uh, also helping this candle. When you think of everything that's gone on for the past uh, five months, and the S&P has gone from 4818 down to 3810, uh, the, I, I would suggest to you that the, the, the chart formation, as it stands right now, with a few hours to go to the end of the, the month, you have to consider that under the pressures, war, uh, inflation like we haven't seen in decades, uh, price of crude oil at a yearly highest level that we've seen in multi-years, uh, just, just overall, I am impressed with the actual number of 4,800 down to 3,800 thousand points nothing just these at it's it's a pretty as i said to subscribers this morning um this is we've got to kind of in a way you've got to be impressed the dow's down 20 percent the sb is down 26 percent the qqq down 45 percent but the rotational aspect to this has really usurped a lot more time than price when you think of everything that's gone on I wouldn't have been surprised at all if the month, the month is young. We've got uh, four, two, six. We've got about six hours, just under six hours to go. Anything can happen. We've seen the last hour of trade. You remember last uh, last month, going into the end of April, it looked like we were going to have a pretty decent uh, a month, and then whoosh, we got that thousand. What was a thousand point down in the Dow, uh, S and P tumbled. And that just changed that candle, very ugly candle. So anything can happen. But I'm just saying that we have use, usurped time rather than price. And to me, that is as important a component as any technical tool, any nautical tool, any astro tool, whatever you want to do. I just think that when you go from the beginning of January to everything that's gone on with containers going from 7,000 to 25,000, uh, just anything, shipping, just the, all around the world, there's been a, a problem, and now crude oil has bumped even higher. I am impressed at this point. That's got nothing to do with what happens after today. It happens to do with what's happened right now. Okay, with that said, let's get everything out the way and say, the is down 51 and 4106. This is going to almost certainly be a peak B, in the daily, but it isn't a peak B in a buy signal, or even a buy mode. I need to see the. I need to see tomorrow's action before I can con really contemplate saying. Almost everything says, "Are you kidding?" Surely going from 38.10 to even where we are now at 41.06, rather than the 41. Was it? Oh, I should have known this. I mean, traded the darn thing. 41. 4158.49. I'm going to type that in because I'm liable to have to say it. 4158. This is called a 4148 for now. Um, having gone to that level in such a short time, that is really impressive. Actually, I have to make it even lighter because it's just to, to, to inform me. It doesn't mean anything. Um, yes, so we've given back a chunk of the candle of Friday. Uh, we'll see what happens by the end of the day. I, I would have expected Friday to have been a consolidation day. Today, a bit, a, a bit of a weak opening and then a rally. 
So we've reversed the whole thing. We had uh, a spectacular gap up session on Friday and it, con and it closed. I mean, that's really a Marabosa candle. If you're looking at the candle of Friday, that means a candle with no big green candle in this case with no VIX. And uh, it's kind of impressive. And now you've got your pullback that you expect the last hour of trading. Uh, give back 20%, 30%, there's a little bit more, but it is a give back. And now what we're looking at is the MACD is good, stochastic is not so great. It's under 80%, it's so 73%. It, it's good, but it's not great. And uh, the 9 hasn't yet crossed over the 14. It's within a day or two of doing that, if it can. And that'll be an impressive thing. And then I'm going to go to a buy signal. I might even have to upgrade immediately to a buy mode. In the meantime, we haven't yet officially got the buy signal. And the Chapman methodology of buy signal implies immediately, the moment I say buy signal, to it means you're now in an upward thrust. A buy mode says that the upward thrust is, is upgraded so that it should be give you at least four higher peaks. All right. Uh, yes, D7 monthly uh, S&P. I, I will talk about that. I'll do it. In, um, maybe I'll do it tomorrow. I want to see where it closes, and then we can talk about it in, in a little bit more uh, detail. We're looking at the um, QQQ. Now, this is going to be really important because you can see the QQQ is giving back reluctantly today. Four and a half points at three or four and a half. Huh, this is so important because, look, the, the high on Friday, well, the low was 280.21, and that was seven sessions ago. And in six sessions, you go from 280 to 309.25. And then today, 309.25, and today you go 309.35. You've extended this leg B. I have to really make it a gray leg B just because officially I only use the blue uh, color when it's a buy mode. So this is still a gray a B. Uh, absolutely fabulous action. But you can expect after such a spectacular move, you're going to have some kind of a pullback. But... The actual pattern of the QQQ thus far is really just an initial takeoff attempt. It isn't anything special. Uh, it's trading in 312 to 313 for any 90-minute period this week would be really impressive. So far, it hasn't done that. Look at the IWM, the Russell 2000, down 280s, down 1.49. The Dow is down 1. Uh, what is that? Oh, I can't see. One point. Oh, 01 and the S&P is down 1.17 so this is a, a, a kind of a deep pullback in the IWM but it's had a fabulous move from the 168 area right to the 1 187.65 level on Friday and here it is at 184.85 so the weekly is improving that's all we can say about the Russell 2000 aha now we want to go to the XLK uh, people have said could you please um, at the beginning of this week can you go through some of those ind indexes that you always talk about? But let's start start off the week with them rather than doing it in the middle of the week. This is Gray Leg B in the XLK, which is the S&P Select Tech Spider Fund. Now, this peak D in the monthly chart, I would say that that's kind of the pattern that I would have anticipated. We didn't get that in the S&P. Uh, on a percentage basis, maybe it's, uh, it's not, not so bad, but on, on a visual basis, Lower lows and lower highs every single month since the high that was made at 178, I think it was, uh, 177.04 uh, December. So the XLK has had a lot of pressure to the downside, but still holding very well. I'll be back. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back. So just on the way to going through these various indices and, and commodities, uh, it's the beginning of the week. I don't have to do any, I don't have to rush here. Many questions came in. Let me just get to them. Boston Scientific, I'll show the chart, medical equipment, making a peak D as we speak for the month of May in the monthly chart in a rectangle formation. 46.62 uh, was the high back in December of 2016. Plummets down to 24.10. There's a, a Boston company. And then it starts a, a rectangle formation, higher highs and higher lows. And what's the rule of thumb in the big, large rectangle formation? For stars to make higher highs and higher lows, expect that. I used to say in a shorter time frame, but for the last year, we've seen that actually in the time frame that we're looking at, it turns out that it goes to a rectangle, a large rectangle formation, and it goes right under, right on, or just above the previous high. And then you've got to be careful if it pulls back halfway into the rectangle. Well, the, the 4662 high of December 2016 was retested August of 2021 at 4629. Pulls back to the midpoint of the, of the rectangle. Has one more flourish to the upside and goes to 4753, I think it was. 4750 was the high. I'll put that in. That was 22.4. So here we go, 47.50, 47.50. And we see that that was, um, I think I said five. Uh, I'll, I'll check on what it was. 4.22. All right. Okay, so this says that that idea that I discussed way back, in, um, of course, I've already forgotten. I'm just calling it 22. Uh, way back in, I think it was about a year ago, at least a year ago, I said, look how many times, actually it was more than that, how many times we've seen V-shaped patterns come right back to within pennies of the previous high, even if it's in the hundreds of stock or index, it came back. The ETF, well, Boston Scientific, BSX, trading at up 10 cents at 41.30 right now, went right to 47.50 in that rectangle formation, but did not close above it. Just one pop to the upside, pull back. There was a peak F, rogue, that was a real rogue wave. MACD ran up, stochastic failed, and 
there. It actually, it's more like a right arm extension, but it has all the characteristics because what happens is it plunges down immediately and within moments it's back to where it was. If you were short, you were correct, but not correct because of the spike. And what happens is it pulls back sharply and now it's formed a rectangle base in the 38 area. It's trading at 41.20. I think it can go a little higher, but then I think it gets stuck and it gets stuck in the 42s. 42.50 to 43.10 area. If it hit 44.15 in the next two weeks, that's fabulous action. But I think this whole area of the medical and scientific, I had said before, I think it's in play. We had a fantastic gain uh, back in, uh, I think, 2020. We, we, we went long, A, Agilent, and uh, we took profits all the way up, but we kept enough of a core to say we've got a core position. Let's see if we can hold it. We might even want to add to it. In fact, I, f I finally got out of it. Uh, it hit our stop. It, we were in at 70. It screamed up to the 179 area. All the way up, we were taking profits. And then it came all the way back down. Hit 112.64. Now it is trading at 128.93 in leg E. So the whole area, uh, what was the other one? We once had Thermo Fisher uh, Scientific, Thermo Fisher, Thermo Fisher TMO, right there. Uh, also, we had fantastic profits. We got in at 484, screamed up to 618, 672, and on the way down, we took profits. And now it's holding very nicely. So I'm, I'm thinking that the rotation that we've been talking about is very selective, that within certain sectors, you've had some stabilization that is really important if you're trying to form some kind of a base it's really important instead of going doom, 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 not that kind of a base just a basic a, a cushion what we're looking at is within the context of the h pattern let me show you here what we're looking at the h pattern if it forms a double bottom low there's a really good chance you could start to see a cup so this H, the dreaded H, where it comes sharply down, looks sharply down, makes an H pattern, fails, takes out the left side low, does it again, takes out the left side low, but this time gets back in, and it goes to peak A, peak B, peak uh, C and D. Uh, this is TMO, Thermo Fisher. That H pattern can then become a really beautiful cup formation. Well, I don't know if that's going to happen right now, but I am impressed. But it says it's still got a lot of resistance in the whole 580s. Uh, area. So this is, I draw this in here just to show you. There's your H pattern. It is in this way. It went under it, but in the end it became a fairly successful H because it's trying to make the cup formation. If it takes too much time by going sideways, if in one week's time it's still in the 563-ish area, up or down, that's going to be using usurping time and saying that pattern is going to fail. Uh, next thing we want to look at, so let's go on with all our different things we're looking at. XLK, SMH is very important. We did not go long, even though I had nice um, um, signals for the SMHs. Instead, we were going to go for something else three times along something else. Uh, we actually missed it this time by a pennies, and then it screamed to the upside. We would still like to get in there. Uh, just needs a little bit of patience. Maybe we won't get it. But yes, the same thing with the SMHs. A leg C to the upside. When you're coming off a low, remember, a peak D doesn't have the same kind of meaning because you've got to respect the fourth highest peak, peak D in the Chaffin Wave methodology. But if you're coming off a low, you could see multiples of those peak Ds as it starts to go higher and higher if the tide starts to rise. And as, it's, as it stands right now, what we're looking at is the SMHs are still making a cup formation. They had the dreaded H, but now it's a cup formation. But within that context, you have to think rectangle stuck in a range. And until the semiconductors really start to trade, not just take out, but trade way above the 200 period moving average of 258. They're at 243 right now. The SMHs are stuck. And I think that that's going to hold for a little while. And that says that this entire phase that we're in right now, a very, let's go to the VIX index. I was asked, could you please show the VIX? Here we go. The VIX index trading down underneath the Chapman Wave inside track support level. The day's young. It's a daily, uh, a daily candle that we were looking at on Friday. It went under it. And look what's happened. We've gone back above it again today. We're up $1.70, $27.42. So I, I suspect we're going to see selling pressure uh, for a lot of today, maybe early into tomorrow. But if there is a chance 
that the S the uh, VIX index trading at 27.43 up dollar 71 had a high of 28.35 hit the uh, uh, 14 period exponential moving in is pulling back my suspicion is that it is in play a little longer but if by Oh, we've already lost a day. If by Thursday of this week, perhaps Friday as I'm doing my show, if the, for any reason um, the, the VIX is trading under 25.30, let's call it 25. It's a uh, 25, 25, 50, 37. No, 57 was the low on Friday. If it's trading under 25 any time, any day this week, and it's holding there for more than 90 minutes, I think that's going to really help the market to stabilize and try again to, to break with the upside. Uh, we'll okay, I'll be back in a moment. Dow's Chapman Tiger Conditions Hour. S uh, Dow is down uh, 270. S&P is down 35. I'll be right back and take your if you want to take advantage of the sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live Timing the Trade webinar Friday, June 10th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join Tom O'Brien for five hours of live education as he teaches you his trading methodology right from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. In this live webinar, Tom O'Brien will be teaching you his entire trading system, including quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and more. We will be limiting this class to 40 attendees, so please do not delay and reserve your seat today for this special live event with Tom O'Brien. All attendees will also receive a physical copy of his book, The Art of Timing the Trade, an $88 value, mailed to you, along with a free month of his daily newsletter, Market Insights, a $169 value. For all the details and to reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hello, so we're looking at uh, the uh, one minute e mini chart. It's making a peak C. It keeps having these big moves up and then gives quite a bit back. It's at a peak C. The 100, uh, sorry, the 10 minute chart made a couple of peak Ds and made a peak, well, it made a, the, the major top was at about 4202.25 and it made a peak F. You can see this, the technicals were starting to fail, but you had the nine still above the 14 and finally it turned down. Then we had a little brief bounce at about a 4170 level, it goes to peak D and the 10 minute pulls back. And then that started off a, an expanding wedge formation uh, with lower highs and much lower lows. And now you've gone to a trough F, and it's attempting. The MACD is just about again try to cross positive. It's a little better than it, uh, than it was at the uh, six o'clock this morning time frame. 
uh, the stochastic is trying to improve, the on balance volume is not. So this is going to be a really important moment. I'll just make it very clear. As far as I'm concerned, uh, there should be a bias towards the upside by midweek again. But in the meantime, it's absolutely imperative to have these consolidations as just part of the give and take of a, a big move up, a rocket ship move up like this. I don't want to just see it continue. Well, I'd like to see it just continue higher and higher and higher, higher to all time highs. It's not going to happen. So that means I would prefer to have breathing space. And we're looking at this very nice move up. Now it's going to go to leg D. And then the target will be 41.45 if we can break the 41.32 level. Uh, no, 41.35 level. Then the next level will be 41.45. As resistance, major support now is in the 4.4110 to 40.95 area over the next hour and a half. All right, let's get back to our story. So we want, what we wanted to look at was the questions came in. I don't want to miss them. Let's see. Um, so question came in about Moz. No, it was a statement. Two people, different people uh, came up with with Moz. That's the Mosaic company for, for potash phosphates, fertilizers. I, I just can't even imagine what this is doing to farmers. I mean, it's all very well getting these higher prices, but their expenses of it, tractors, every, every, everything's expensive. So I'm just suggesting to you that Moz could be stuck in a bit of a range here. It's at 61 95 I'm going to just draw in the rectangle formation. I'm going to draw a double rectangle formation. This is the bigger rectangle, but my suspicion is that we're really looking at this rectangle right here between a six, I'll give you the exact figures, uh, 64, uh, 63's resistance and 59 support. Just for the moment, I think that's kind of where it is. Uh, next question I had was X was the US Steel. No, I don't see anything yet in the steels. If you look at SLX, uh, U.S. steel is down a dollar forty-four at twenty-six fourteen. But if you look at the SLX, which is the um, Van Eck Vectors steel ETF, yes, it is at a peak C in the monthly chart, and it's holding really well. This too, this is one of the reasons why we we, we were so gung ho getting going along last week because there were just so many signs that were saying, you know. <laughs> You can't get uh, – well, some people are talking about crashes and, all, and, and that sort of thing. I just don't see uh, – taking so much time from – for depends which index you're looking at, November, December, or January. Different indexes rotated through their all-time highs or most recent highs. Um, all I can say is that when you take this kind of time, it's six weeks from the top to where you start to get to the pot potential crash. Okay, and I just don't see that right now. Maybe I'm just totally off the wall. So it's, it's six weeks before you get to the first level. Remember, the 2000, uh, 1987, it was the August 22nd or something high, and it took until October the 19th to get that, that major bottom. So you had two periods, and I, I, I see something very different here. I see something that says, Within the context of road, if, if you in your mind had said, you know what, I'm thinking rotation. I'm thinking rotation from this, from the summer of 2010, because after the 2009 low, which most of us here at uh, TFNN had got as buy signals to buy modes uh, that March period uh, of 2009, um, that was where I decided that the analysis that I had that said we should get a deeper pullback, but in fact it was holding very well put me into the category of way back of the 1980s when I remember the market that held because of uh, certain conditions and did not break down. And that put me into the category of saying, watch those rotational corrections. Yes, we will get some severe ones, and we certainly had a 35% decline uh, in the Dow at some point. Uh, but at the same time, there were many small 8 to 12% corrections. And that's really what I'm looking at here. I believe very strongly that this whole idea that the market is finding resources uh, in the buying category as well as the se selling category, but there's more bias towards the buying than the selling in different phases, and that's part of the rotation. It's the scales of justice. Remember, you've got the one side, and you try to balance it with the other. That's kind of what we're looking at. So overall, the balance could be weak, so that, yes, you're getting some kind of a balance, but you're going down. And on the upside, you're getting some kind of balance, but you're going up. 
So the bias is the tide is what you have to note. And I think the tide in the shorter term has turned to the upside. I don't know how long it's going to last. And you can see that here in the SLX holding very well, but it's very individual stocks that you need to look at. CF, uh, CF is, uh, wasn't it, it was CLF, CLF. Well, let me just give you CF, uh, in CF industri Industries, Holdings, Hydrogen, Nitrogen Products, Clean Energy, Fertilizer, Emissions and Abatement. In the lower range, just stuck, just consolidating of a spectacular move from the 40s about a year or so ago up into the 100 and uh, what was the 110 area and now it's trading at 99.72, just a high level consolidation. All right, let's get back to the story. It was CLF that was asked about. So CLF is the, the nuggets, right? Yeah, flat roll steel, cliff, even cliffs, ink and iron ore pellets uh, take over. Of, they took over AK steel uh, stock that we used to trade, a very single digit stock we used to have a little fun with, haven't for a long time because it got taken over. A B, we're making a leg C in CLF. It's acting very well, but it's in the low range. It's trying to break away from the 200 period moving average. I'd say give it a little time. I wouldn't be rushing into this right now. It's at 23.44 down a dollar 14 CLF. A question came in. Where did it go? Where did it go? Uh, could I look at? Oh, could, I haven't even looked at it. The dollar. <laughs> the dollar is up uh, 66 ticks at 102. It held, a, it held a 50 period exponential moving average. Remember, I don't use these all the time. I only need them when I need them. Did I care about the 50 period moving average when the dollar was rallying to a, 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 a multi-year, multi-decade actually, high of 105.01? No, but now I do. And it's holding it for three days. I've been talking about it for subscribers. And now what we're looking at is it's a peak F. I'm still calling it an F in the weekly chart. Only a leg C in the monthly. So looking out, the dollar should go to higher highs. But in the meantime, we can consolidate EUR, USD. We're looking at the euro dollar currency pair uh, trading at 1.070. And uh, this is on the nine period exponential moving average made a peak, peak C. Uh, this is where the weekly chart says what happens next. The nine period moving average has been tackled a number of times, but not once has it closed above the 14 period exponential moving average since it did that once for one week back in the fourth week of the fourth of Feb. Uh, the euro dollar currency uh, needs to hold one point. What is that? 1.065. That's going to be really important. If you're looking at the USD JPY, that's the yen. Look at that. Moves together in sync in the direction, but not the same percentage moves as the dollar, US dollar currency pair, 128.69, up 1.086, up 0.86% in leg C, but I can only call it gray. I'll be back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. We're back at the AMLP, which is Alarian MLP ETF, to put the infrastructure. Just a question about, I guess, uh, uh, could I look at it? Yeah, this is acting very well. High level consolidation. It should make a leg D. Remember, this is the whole month of May. So if by today, and it, 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 at this point, it just doesn't look like it's going to make a new high above the 4156 level of the 21st of April, it's at 40.40. You never, you shouldn't say never. Well, I'm going to say probably never. Uh, but if it does, that'll be an extension of leg C. My guess is it'll happen later in the week, and that'll be in the month of June. And that'll be leg D finally in Alarium MLP. Big rectangle formation. I didn't draw this in, but I will draw it in now. There it is. And I, I'll, I'll raise it. It doesn't have to go all the way to the bottom. I'll just be as conservative as possible. Uh, take it down to that level there at about 30. It's still a rectangle formation, making a high high. And it should, the target would be the high of the of January 2020 of 44.65. So, oh, that's quite a ways, 10% from here. <clears throat> that would be the target over a period of a couple of weeks, and we'll see what happens. In the meantime, it's acting very well. It's got tremendous support in the 39.5 to 38.5 area, and it's trading at 40.51, up 17 cents. So, yeah, this is a couple of things that I want to look at here. A question, two questions came in, different places, different ways, and they both said, um, Basil, would you do anything with the the Chinese stocks? So a question in the Dan, a question about FXI. So this is the China. This is the China large cap iShares uh, ETF. I didn't put in. I should have gone from a trough Doji candle to a peak APP and a leg C. So the question is. Uh, one question was just, could I look at it? And the other question is, is this now in a buy mode? Well, let me see. I need to be, uh, the, the, these are the aspects that I look at. So it is trading at 32.19, up $1.25. Remember what I had said before was, yes, you could have trades in the Chinese area, uh, Baba, that's Alibaba and all these others. But my, uh, JD, uh, JD, JD.com, I believe, um, but I would stick. You've got enough to worry about with American stocks. Why would you add another layer of insecurity? That, that was just my reasoning, right? But for those of you who like to do this, look, it's in a rectangle formation. It's gapped up. It's up 4% today, 32.20, up $1.25. And I have to now call this a buy signal. I've got an up arrow because I'm calling it a buy signal. There was a dreaded H pattern that has turned into a successful cup formation right here. Let me show you. Look, one right here, two right here, and uh, there we are. So there's a chance that we get in the cup formation. I suspect, though, it's a 31, somewhere between 32, <clears throat> somewhere between 30 to 50, <clears throat> and maybe even just 33, 65. That's where there's going to be a lot of resistance, and you've got a weekly, much larger cup formation, uh, uh, sorry, a rectangle formation. So I, and that, I, 
I'm not telling you whether to, play, to to be in this or not. I'm just saying treat it as a short-term trade. If you're in it, raise your stop. Know that overnight anything can happen, that you have a stop for the FXI. And, and be in a, in a, on a platform that allows you to have stops in overnight. That's really important. That's all. And then what I would say is, yes, this is a good move up. See, the big uh, resistance area now is in the 3290 to 3320 uh, area. How it handles that is going to be very important. Our next question came in is, where did I go? I have, I, have I finished? A TLT. Look at this. TLT makes a peak D. A very quick peak. A, P, P, peak C, peak D. I, I don't like that at all. That's usually very negative, and that's just saying to me, that the reason why we did not switch, uh, sorry, our thinking, not the positions, but our thinking of going into the TBT is that I think that we are still in for high yields in the, um, in the short to intermediate term. The very near term, we were moving up and the TLT was act TBT was acting well. Look, here's the TBT, which is the inversion. It made a PD. Remember, I spoke about this the other day. I said it's going to make a dreaded H. Can it make a cup formation? No, it isn't. Uh, it can't, and it's in a sell mode in the daily. Um, nothing yet to say in the weekly. It did go to a peak E, but it's not yet even a sell signal. So we're just looking at this and seeing what can happen. What can happen is that the TNX, which is the 10-year the Treasury bond fund, has gone to a sell mode from the peak F top, trading at 2860, 2.860, up uh, 1.17, up 4%, 4.25%. Um, let's see. I, I just think it's stuck in a range, and the range says it could go to 29.89. That's the uh, um, the next resistance level. But if it closes under 27, that's 2.7. But it's written in as 27. That's going to be a big negative uh, for yields. Uh, for yes, yields because the bonds would go higher. Now let me just do this quickly. Nike. Yes, Nike. We'll look at Nike again. Uh, we have one of our dentists who treats it as a kind of a, a benchmark in some kind of way for him. And I think that's a, it's a good way of thinking of this. It's a really international company, Nike, uh, Inc., B Share, Sports and Sportswear. Uh, Peak D, Doji Candle at about just under 180. It comes tumbling down. It goes to 103, 80 points. I mean, let's face it, that's a, that's a bit more, 46%. That's a big move down. Uh, and now it's trading at 117.31 in leg A. Haven't got any signals yet other than to say it's a very good move and it's over the left side resistance. It's going to this ugly candle of early May. Um, we'll see what happens, but this is good. But the nine period moving average, the pink nine period moving average in the weekly chart of 119.93 to 124, the black 14 period exponential moving average of 124.46. I still think that's going to be severe resistance. And one of the things about Nike is in that whole clothing area, it's in, the, it's in this... It's in the area that we've seen the rotation through the different container ships. Uh, sometimes they get products, sometimes they don't. And mostly I think it's a kind of a product issue that we're looking at right now. That's just my guess. So I'm not using it as a benchmark to say that's kind of the way the, the Dow goes. But it does very often parallel, and that, that's nice to know. Next question came in. Uh, let's see. May 2022, Dallas Fed Manufacturing Index minus 7.3 versus 1.1 prior. Output 18.8 .8 versus prior 10.8. Bad news is now again good news. <laughs> Interesting, yeah. Uh, let me just see what we've got here. Yes, there is another one. So the question came in. Wait, over the weekend, I had a question. I trouble with the, over the weekend is I do all the work, and then comes Monday I'm, I'm, or Tuesday, I, I'm fresh in looking at new things. Oh, that's right. Hack. Could you discuss hack? You've been talking about it on your in your uh, overview, but can you just articulate your thinking about the whole prime cybersecurity ETF security stocks? So I use this. I could have kept it as a peak C, but I use this as a phantom peak. I hardly ever do that. There are rules for doing that. I've got to have a little nick in the uh, one of the technicals to say if everything was running up without any little flurry of activity or a little uh, flutter, uh, I can't use it. But in this case, I could use that as a peak C going from 66.34 to 66.39, five cents in a monthly chart. I decided I'd make it a red phantom peak. I had all the ingredients. It's an official thing. Um, I didn't fake anything. That's the way it is. And I went to a peak D at 67, uh, 97, 
and it traded down to 44.16. This is the, the prime cybersecurity ETF security stock. I can't believe that this is a problem. Why on earth are the security stocks acting so badly? I'll, I'll talk to that briefly, get back, and I'll discuss what to look for for the rest of the day. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, so let, let me just do this before I, I run out of time. Uh, a couple of things that are really important, and one of the reasons why our bias has been in long positions for a little while here is because uh, there is... In many technical levels, we are extremely oversold, even with that move up on Friday, which is really an extension higher than I expected, I'm not complaining, but I, we should, we've given back a chunk of that. We might have to have another day of consolidation. But I think that we're looking at buyers coming in very selectively, and we've got these extraneous events. They're not so extraneous anymore because we know about them, but, but certainly crude oil spiking as it did almost to 120 today, that, that, that throws a, you know, that, that's a, a wrench in the, uh, the works. So what we're looking at here is that if the, vol if the volatility index, which is the, um, the, the VIX index at 27.09 up $1.37, if it starts to trade, and let me go to the actual uh, contract itself. Okay, no, we don't need that. We need this right here. Okay. Yeah, so the volatility index, the VIX, trading right now at 29, uh, 27.09, up $1.37. 
if later in the day, and I suspect we're going to still see some little waves of selling and buying and selling and buying, but just use the VIX as a good example. At 2709, if it starts to trade under 2650, certainly under 26, I'm not sure that it's going to happen today. I'm just saying. If it does, and the Dow is up uh, even 30 points, it's down 190 right now, but it's even minus 30 to maybe up 12. That'll be very good action. And you might see an end of the day flow to the upside. I suspect that there's still a lot of selling pressure coming in. So we, we kind of be stalling. But if you start to see the VIX going from the high of the day of 28.35, if it breaks that to the upside and goes to 28.55, and the Dow goes back to minus 450, you could see selling pressure in tomorrow. I, I like the selling pressure right now. I don't want it to get too intense. And we'll, we'll go with that. I'm going to hand you over to uh, Larry, Larry Fisavento. Great programming all day. Don't